Okay, um, my name is Emily Wu. My partner would be Dalila and Antoine Pham. Our project is based on corroborative based learning and um, we are doing the presentation at my high school and these are four of my colleagues. This is uh, Mr. Nong, um, he's a math teacher. Ms. Lee is also a math teacher. Ms. Smart and Mr. Wu, they are all math teachers. So um, this is our first year um, at this school district having Common Core um, being implemented. So um, all my colleagues are interested in, in finding out um, what is so special about cooperative um, based learning about and we are going to be talking about a project um, in front of them. And so basically um, we have um, different ideas in terms of um, what do we do in, in order to be able to uh, see cooperative based learning would be helpful or not. And so we do have three uh, researchers to do this study. Um, Dalila, um, our partner, she's working at a different school district. So um, Tuan and I, we work at the same school district, therefore we could be doing the presentations together. I'm going to have um, Tuan to help me um, move on to the next slide and throughout the presentation I'll be doing the same thing for him as well. Um, first of all, <coughs> I want to say that um, the other partner of ours, she's teaching at a middle school level. She's a sixth grade math teacher. Tuan and I, we teach in a high school level, and both he and I have integrated math classes this year. Tuan has three of those classes, and I only have one. Um, both of us have integrated math classes with uh, Sadai students. Sadai is really uh, meaning students come from another country and English is not their home language or their primary language. And so no matter what kind of students that we have, uh, all three of us feel like students these days, they are lack of motivation and it's very difficult to engage them in learning, in, especially in math classes. Um, the purpose of our study is really trying to see um, how to increase students' uh, motivation and engagement in our math classes. And more importantly, um, the strategies that we want to implement to help them be more motivated and more engaged, um, would they also be helpful to, to increase their achievement level in our math classes? And so we, we went through more than 40 references. Uh, they, they were all uh, academic journals to find out what cooperative based learning um, would be a great way to, to help the students. And what we found out from these uh, references is the fact that a lot of uh, researchers or uh, scholars, they promote cooperative based learning at the same time, mainly because it helps the students to be ready for the 21st century um, workforce skill sets. And I was mentioning to you guys um, what we were curious about, so we turned our curiosity into two of the research uh, questions that uh, our group decided to do. The primary question is, will using cooperative-based learning increase motivation and engagement in middle and high school math students? And the second um, research question that we had was um, cooperative-based learning um, is it possible to increase a student's achievement level? So these are the two questions. And I was talking about cooperative based learning um, would be a great way to help our students to become competitive in the 21st century workforce, mainly because um, the 21st century workforce requires students to be able to communicate, to be able to work uh, collaboratively, and they need to be able to think critically and 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 they they have to be able to uh, to be creative at their work. So um, we're going to do more discussions on these matters. Tuan will be um, talking about uh, what we found out from the journals. Okay. So to summarize some of the main finding about the uh, literature review that we you know have for our uh, paper. Um, 
So the declining mathematics, right, achievement has been a concern for our, all stakeholders, students, parents, and um, teachers. And it, um, in order to improve that uh, decline in you know, uh, the achievement, um, Project-based learning, right, is a way to help improve um, well, student um, achievement in mathematics and other uh, subjects. Okay, and the attitude toward math also. Um, so for project-based learning, right, it is described as teaching methods in which students work together in small groups to help each other learn um, academic contents. Um, the important thing about this is the fact that for the um, group that the project-based learning, right, is based on, right. Student shouldn't just well, um, be uh, student should be assigned roles and should be responsible for the work, right? And also work together um, to um, well achieve the goal of the topic that is presented, right? Or the skills that they need to um, to learn, okay? helping one another to achieve that common goal. And then the shift, right, going from the teacher center to the student center is important to help benefit the student right, academically and socially right, because in interaction between the student right, is uh, crucial right, in well, the project-based learning. Right? So um, for the project-based learning, right, the student center right, um, method right, is well, given the op opportunity for students to engage in discussion, solve problems, and then also collaborate among their peers. So as I already mentioned, right, the social interaction part is very important because students need to work together right, to be able to well, um, help each other learn and then also just to uh, have uh, assigned roles where you know, they know exactly what they're doing right, without the teacher telling them, oh, you, know, you have to do this or that. Right? They know their role and then they help each other to uh, well, <coughs> achieve the, uh, <coughs> achieve the uh, goal for the day. So for the two main uh, techniques that we use, right, in the um, intervention plan, we use a jigsaw puzzle, a jigsaw technique, uh, so that uh, students uh, split up into a different um, uh, group, and then they, uh, from that group, they learn right the particular uh, topic that um, is assigned there, and then once they uh, master that um, content, they go back to their own group and they share the content among each other, so that everyone um, share one part of the topic and then every, uh, together everyone know the whole topic as a whole. And then for the next one is think pair share. So this is for the pairs, right? Other elbow partners or other way that you can assign um, well, the pairs. So what they do is student first, right? Think about the given um, question, right? Or um, context. And then after that, right? They in their pair share with each other their ideas and then just come up with a conclusion. Uh, and then later on, share with the uh, whole classroom if need. Okay. So um, after we, uh, both of us, we talked about uh, what makes us wonder, what makes us curious, uh, why do we wanted to to answer these two primary and uh, secondary uh, research questions. Tuan finished talking about what we got out from reading all those forty um, academic journals, and so all three of us we decided to um, implement um, what we think could be helpful in our math classes, jigsaw and, and think pair share. And to make sure um, the information that we gather would be valid, we did a pre-test and, and post-test. The pre-test was given to the students um, before the intervention plan. Again, the intervention plan is including jigsaw and, and think pair share, um, these uh, two teaching strategies. and then. The post intervention was given to the student um, after four weeks for my student and the <coughs> other group member, and three weeks for Tuan because Tuan only uh, collected the data for a three week period, as opposed to um, I have four weeks. And then um, I, well, all three of us think that our data is valid mainly because we assign our students, again, um, the other researcher, she had 33 students. In my uh, integrated math class, I have 35. And then Tuan's class had uh, 29 students. And we gave a specific uh, 
ID number to the students so that their names are not appeared on any of the reflection journal, uh, the pre-test, or the post-test um, themselves. And then, um, besides giving them the pre-test survey, the post-test survey, uh, the formative and the summative assessments to the students, we also wanted students to give out more of an open-ended um, answer to us. So then they were required to write out a short reflection journal every day um, towards the end of the period. It could be really short. It could be in bullet form, in short phrases, uh, to basically tell us what did they like about the activities for the day and, and what did they dislike about the activities. And then um, to make sure that um, this is some kind of intervention plan that we want to keep driving for three to four weeks. Uh, we as researchers, we read their uh, reflection journals every day. We also write uh, reflection, uh, reflection journals ourselves to compare um, what we think happened in the classroom and what students saw uh, in the classroom. And most of the time, um, I see my students having the same reactions um, as I had of that day's lesson. Um, if I think it went well, most of the students believe that they, they did well in class. And when I felt like the days that I don't think it, it was working uh, well, and then a lot of students will think that, oh, I wish I was just you know taking notes individually and then having a lesson from you directly. And then we, we call this um, the, the triangular uh, method in a way, meaning I tried an intervention and students told me their feedbacks and then I will modify based on um, how they feel or how I feel as the teacher. Um, this is the bar graph, um, the data that our third researcher found. Um, she had her students to, to rank um, how well do they like coming to a math class. Um, the first two columns you see, this is uh, rated four or less. So she had some students don't believe that uh, math is some subject that they really like. And then the middle column is saying students having the neutral feelings. They, they don't really mind coming to a math class. They, they just go, okay, it's just another class. I don't really have a feelings for it. And then she had a lot more students um, rated the math class to be their favorite subject. Uh, and she did uh, do the data collection from a sixth grade group. And so that's her result. And then the next uh, bar graph, this is her second question asking her student, um, how, do you, how much do you feel like you'd be motivated coming to school um, for her math class? And the good news for her is no students um, feeling not motivated, and then a lot of students feeling motivated before and after the intervention plan. And her result showed her that more students feeling highly motivated after the intervention plan uh, was implemented. And then the next slide, um, she had her students um, telling her that they would like to work independently or work collaboratively. And she also has students telling her, do you enjoy um, working in both categories? So she has three different types. And some students really just prefer to work independently before and after the intervention plan. And a lot more students prefer to work collaboratively before and after the intervention plan. Um, the, the, the news is, she actually has less students wanted to work collaboratively after the intervention plan being implemented. Um, I think mainly because more students move on to the point that they don't mind working individually or in groups. So this is why um, the result actually decreased comparing to before the intervention plan. And then this is Tuan's result. So for my result here, it shows um, the score of the student on the pre-test and the post-test of the units. So for the pre-test, right, um, as you can see for the chart, right, all 29 of my students right, did not do so well in the pre-test. They all have a percent, that is 60% or less. So they basically failed right, that pre-test. 
which tests up on the uh, topic of um, statistics, uh, statistics. And then for the post-test, right, once we well, implement the um, intervention plan, right, we have the result of only nine students, or 31% of the well, student um, score less than 60%. We have two students, right, or 7% score between 60 and 69%. We have four students, or 14%, right, score between 70 and 79%. We have five students, score between 80 and and 89%, and then we have nine students scoring uh, between 90 and uh, 100%. So as you can see, right, that is a vast improvement, right, between the pre-test and the post-test for that unit. And then just to compare between that unit and the previous unit, right, I uh, again compare the score, right, and as you can see, for the most part, um, for the most part, right, students improve, right, slightly, but they do improve, right in terms of the score going um, from the previous unit to this post, uh, to this unit, right, with the intervention plan. And then um, the next part of uh, pie chart, actually, uh, they're my students' result. I have a lot of students, they um, don't speak English as their primary language in my integrated math class. So um, in the past, I just did direct teaching, and a lot of students told me that they they are not really motivated um, in my class because I think 17 out of 35 students, they, they rated four or below before the intervention plan uh, was implemented. And then um, some students rated five neutral, maybe because they already don't really care about coming to a math class or not, or, oh, it's just another class. And then I have a few students, they rated six or higher. After the intervention plan, I had a lot more students um, wanted to come to my math class and only three students, three students still rated um, feeling motivated coming to my math class uh, with a four or less. And then the majority of the students, which is 22 out of 35, they enjoy coming to class and they feel motivated to learn because of the implementation of um, our intervention plan. Um, the next couple bar graph is just to show you the differences before and after the intervention plan. And as I can see, I have um, less students feeling somewhat motivated after the intervention plan, mainly because those percentage of students, they move on to the next group, uh, which is highly motivated. So a lot more um, shows that they're interested in learning math. And then um, this is our conclusion part, and I'm gonna have Tuan to begin. Okay, so as we find out from the data that we collected, right, with the pre, post test, and all the uh, survey about their uh, well, motivation, motivation level, right, we find out the fact that um, the cooperative based learning right, is very influential in helping students uh, improve their engagement, achievement, and also motivation. Right? Um, so it also improves their social skill in the fact that they work together as a group, right, to help each other learn the material and having roles right, that are uh, assigned by the teachers so that they know exactly what they're doing uh, instead of just sitting there and doing nothing or just well, pretend that they're doing something. Okay. Um, so again, right, it just the fact that for the um, cooperative-based learning, right, it helps improve both their um, achievement and their engagement through formative and um, summative assessment and also through surveys uh, uh, to test, I mean to, well, test their uh, level of motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, so. And then, oh. um, so, yeah. Sorry, so um, we all feel like this is a successful experience for us, mainly because we started something uh, in the middle of the second semester um, of this school year. And at the beginning, students don't really enjoy doing uh, collaborative-based learning because they feel like, oh, we have to cooperate, be, be working together, and what is this cooperative-based learning? And then we just had to work very hard to, to motivate them to learn, and they did show progress. Um, the downside that all three of us found out is we should just start doing cooperative-based learning at the beginning of the school year, and uh, we probably should implement um, this is these two strategies for a longer period of time so we can see oh, what works better for the students and what we should improve, improve or yeah. modify. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, so just give the a chance to just get get more used to it instead of oh, this is only three weeks or four weeks, and then you know I feel rushed, you know, and then they don't well learn as probably as well if we um, were to start in the beginning of the school year and just have them throughout the whole year, um, you know, be well be used, you know, to used doing to this. It. Yeah. So, um, but then in overall, um, we found this is a good experience. Um, students get to learn differently, not just sitting here take notes from teachers and we get to see how creative students can be and, and they, they could think outside the box, which is something that we want them to do um, when they start working in the future. So, any questions for us? So how much do you think your students enjoy doing collaborative based learning? Um, I think overall, uh, a lot of students enjoy doing this. You know, they feel that's different. Again, you know, even though we just started late in the school year, they feel it's a different thing that you know is helpful for them. And I put um, in their um, pre uh, survey question, they say the fact that you know, like they learned this. Bef I mean, they used this before in their other classes. So it's something that you know some of them already are involved with, right? And they feel well, you know, it's helpful for them. Um, question is, um, would you implement it every day or would you like do it every once in a while? Um, all three of us had to implement it every single day in this particular group of students, mainly because we have to um, collect data. Um, but as a math teacher, I would not be implementing this strategy every single day. Um, since I, I did notice there are students uh, having really weak foundation skills and they, they need direct teaching to help them. So I would um, teach probably two or three out of five days in a week um, with direct teaching, and then the other two or the other three days to, to have them work in groups to solve problems, um, uh, solve examples together. Um, so for other subjects, if they feel like, uh, I mean, if you feel like you want to do this every day, you can always have um, part of the time just doing instruction, and then the other half or the other part, you can implement you know this um, well strategy yeah. to help you know, yeah. with the, the, the cooperative based learning, learning strategy. So we can just you know, combine together. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you.